Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. Captain America, the most common sign of American soft power in Southeast Asian night market clothing stands. And at the center of it all, the power lies in the logo. A logo that is repeated on the captain's famous shield. Like America, kind of, the captain seeks to only defend those who cannot defend themselves. Which is why his main piece of equipment is a defensive one. And why his only offensive attack is a defensive preemptive one. America. Anyway, today we're going to be looking at Captain America's shield, the centerpiece of Steve Rogers' philosophy as a superhero. Like the Captain, it's gone through its own long journey of development and upgrades. Before Captain America wielded the indestructible round shield that he became famous for, he had a lot simpler looking heater shield, a common and practical design used by melee fighters during the medieval era. It was called a heater shield because it was created in the same shape as a heating iron. This type of shield was far smaller and lighter than previous designs because the average foot soldier now was wearing more armor on their limbs. The heater shield lacked the same type of light protection larger shields could afford. Now, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, after the entry of the United States into World War II, Steve Rogers was being paraded around by the USO in order to sell war bonds and entertain soldiers. While on tour in Italy, Rogers finds out that his childhood friend Bucky Barnes had been captured by Hydra. The captain decided enough was enough and goes on a mission to rescue his old friend, who is now being held in a Hydra facility in Austria. With hardly any time to prepare for his mission, Steve keeps on his USO uniform and even brings along with him the heater shield. Although the shield was basically just a fancy prop, not everything back then was made out of plastic. So the captain's fancy USO shield was actually made out of steel, and just half an inch of steel can stop most non-armor piercing rounds, so it actually would be quite effective against small arms fire normally found on a World War II battlefield. But when Captain America encounters the Super Soldier Serum injected Red Skull, the weakness of the shield becomes apparent immediately when the supervillain dents the shield with a punch. Day. <laughs> After this ordeal, Howard Stark presents Captain America with a new shield made out of an extremely rare metal known as vibranium. As a matter of fact, vibranium was so rare that the army had used its last piece of vibranium to make the shield. This shield was circular in shape, kind of like a frisbee, which also made it a lot easier to throw at people's faces. Vibranium also had a unique ability to absorb and reflect huge amounts of kinetic energy that would otherwise deform or misshape in most other metals. And by kinetic energy, I mean anything from a minigun to a plasma rifle to Thor's hammer. Now, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the Captain's shield would more or less stay the same minus a few paint jobs to make the thing attract a little less attention. But the Captain finally does lose the shield after he has that small fight with Iron Man and manages to beat the crap out of him. Before Steve Rogers can walk away from the fight, a beaten down Tony Stark tells the Captain that he doesn't deserve to wear the shield anymore. The shield doesn't belong to you. You don't deserve it. Tony was coming from a position of authority, after all, his father had originally given Captain America the shield in the first place. Without giving it a second thought, Captain America responds by leaving his shield behind. But before we discuss the next iteration of Captain America's shield in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, let's take a look at the comics first. Like in the MCU, the first edition of Captain America, which was published on March 1st, 1941, also showed our hero carrying a heater shield. He was also punching Hitler in the face. Things were less subtle and more awesome back then. The problem was another comic had come out a year earlier, debuting another very patriotic American superhero named just The Shield. And as you can guess, The Shield literally had a heater shield clued onto his chest. This presented some problems for Captain America. And in the April 1941 second edition of Captain America, the Captain is back once again scaring the bejesus out of Hitler, this time with a more circular traditional shield we're more accustomed to seeing. Now in the Marvel comics, there are two versions of how Captain America transitions from his heater shield to a circular one. The original version has Dr. Myron McClane, one of the world's foremost metallurgists, creating the Captain's shield accidentally while attempting to create adamantium. At the time, the US government was funding research to create a new type of armor that would give their war machines a distinct advantage over the Axis powers during World War II. The good doctor worked endlessly mixing together all sorts of different metals, including using a very rare metal called vibranium. One night after he had passed out from exhaustion, and an ally was accidentally created in his lab and poured into a mold that was the shape of a disc. What resulted was Captain America's shield. This shield was nigh indestructible and made out of a vibranium steel alloy. 
The shield was later painted red, white, and blue and gifted to the captain by President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, which is kind of how comics just worked back then. They played a huge role in shaping public opinion, especially during World War II. The modern day equivalent would be Donald Trump giving all the Avengers penthouse suites in one of his properties, and then instead of having them go eat shawarma at the end of the movie, they would go to a Trump steakhouse. Anyway, in 2001, Marvel kind of retconned how Captain got his shield. The second, more recent theory has Captain America traveling in 1941 to Wakanda, where he encounters T'Challa's father, T'Chaka. The two hit it off immediately and earn each other's trust. As a token of his trust in Captain America, T'Chaka gives him vibranium, which he takes back to America and is put into his shield by Dr. McClane. Now, when Steve Rogers crashed into Antarctica, he was entombed in ice with his shield. And for a while, a few others pretended to be Captain America and used steel versions of his shield. Eventually, when the real captain is awoken, he encounters one of the fake captains and goes head-to-head -head with one, shattering the steel version of the shield. Upon being revived by the Avengers, Tony Stark goes to upgrade Captain America's suit and shield. This included making several different magnetic and electronic improvements on the shield itself to allow the captain to have better control of the disc while it's flying in midair. Some of these components were deemed a bit too cumbersome for the captain and he removed it from his shield. Nonetheless, in Captain America's earlier adventures with the Avengers, his shield is destroyed numerous times, but reappears unscathed in the next episode. This apparently was because Tony Stark kept on taking Captain America's shield away from him to study and was giving him steel versions of the shield to use in combat. The true Captain America shield was dented once when Thor got a bit out of control and smashed it with his hammer, but soon after Thor realized that he was being a dick and pounded the dent out for the good captain. Now, Steve Rogers in the comic wouldn't always be the one to wield the shield. Others like John Walker would take over the role. During the time when John Walker was Captain America, Steve Rogers as the captain was given a true adamantium shield by Tony Stark. While denser and heavier than vibranium, adamantium did not have the same kind of energy absorbing properties that vibranium had. The vibranium is what allows Captain America to block crazy amounts of power with his original shield. When the blow hits the shield, very little energy is actually transferred to his body, which is very important. While it's almost impossible to pierce adamantium shield, the energy that is transferred through the shield could be potentially dangerous for the person holding it, especially if the blow is coming from, say, the Hulk. In the midst of the armor wars, the captain and Tony Stark kind of butt heads and the captain gets knocked into a coma. This naturally really pisses off Steve Rogers, who then gives his shield back to Tony Stark. Then the Wakandans approach Steve Rogers and give him one made out of pure vibranium. There have been some other crazier versions of Captain America and his shield, including the Infinity Warp alternate reality version version of Steve Rogers, where the US government was teaching its super soldiers how to use the same mystical powers that Doctor Strange had learned. In this scenario, Steve Rogers is basically a cross between Doctor Strange and Captain America and wields a magical shield. Anyway, back to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Captain America has left his shield behind after the Civil War, and during Spider-Man Homecoming, when Happy Hogan is overseeing the Avengers move upstate, it's mentioned that a new prototype for Captain America's shield was one of the items that has to be transported. But we don't really know what exactly that shield is just yet. Now, during the Avengers Infinity War, we see Steve Rogers once again returning to aid the Avengers in their fight against Thanos. In the spirit of the comics, Captain America receives help from the Wakanda and is given two awesome looking vibranium gauntlets. Eyes up. Stay sharp. In many ways, it's a good look for the now disillusioned superhero. The two gauntlets provide less defensive shielding for the captain while giving him much more mobility and offensive power. It also matches his darker suit and awesome beard. The only person who can hate on a beard like that cannot grow a beard himself or herself. Now, while the gauntlets are cool, we all know that the Captain needs his shield back eventually because that's what Captain America is all about. And in the Avengers Endgame trailer, we see that the Captain is once again reunited with his iconic shield. But I wonder if it's that new prototype shield that Tony Stark has been working on, kind of as like a, I'm sorry for being such a dickhead makeup gift. Or is it the original shield? From what we can tell, it makes sense that Avengers Endgame will return to the Marvel Cinematic Universe's roots with the original Avengers with some of their original designs and equipment. Of course, it is possible that Tony Stark has just kept Captain America's shields and maybe made some minor upgrades to it, like, I don't know, attached guns to it. That's what I would do. Anyway, doing all this research has me really pumped up for Avengers Endgame. 
Now let me know in the comment section below what you think Captain America will be using in the next installment of Avengers. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification button down below, and as usual, thanks for joining us. My name is Alan, reminding you that life is movie, and you are the protagonist.